talk, girl talk. What's better than girl talk, girl talk, girl talk? What's better than girl talk? A chat with the ladies about their day, the ups and downs along the way. She's a cook, she's a chauffeur, she's a worker bee. First in the door and last to leave. Welcome to Girl Talk. Girl Talk is a lively discussion of the day-to-day -day lives of women, their challenges, their obstacles, and their successes. It's a lively discussion about women that are doing wonderful things here in our valley, helping our community. And today we have two women that are running for office. So our topic today is women running for office in Jackson County. This is for the Jackson County Commission. And um, we have two guests. We have Lenita Witt. So if we could have a camera shot on Lenita. Perfect. And also our other guest is Amy Theron. So these two ladies are running against two incumbents. Um, and we talked about incumbents last week, didn't we, Carol? And, and yes, and I'm Carol Voison. I'm the oh, co-host. Oh, sorry, That's Carol. okay. You know, I have what? a no problem. I'll just well, quiet. See, I don't have my teleprompter today, a, well, and so there. I'm a little loosey right goosey. There. Well, that's okay to be loosey goosey. Um, so anyway, we have two guests and my co-host, Carol Voison. Thank you. And uh, this this earlier this week, I attended a forum where both of you were. And I would point out that neither of your opponents attended, nor one of the other people that's, that's running, uh, which is really discouraging. And um, incumbents have a tendency not to want to engage with their opponents, which is, is really an issue. Uh, but we won't have a, a, as formal a, a, a meeting today. This is more of a discussion. So no timers or anything le like that. We've provided you with some questions, and there'll be others that might come up. And we have a couple of videos from that forum. So why don't we um, get started? So Carol, you want to ask the first question? Yes, I'd love to. Now, right now we have three commissioners in Jackson County. Now, some people have been thinking about maybe we need five, maybe nine. What do you think about increasing the number of commissioners in Jackson County? Amy? You Amy, first? you yeah. want to go first? I think that there's definitely pros and cons. I've been touring around um, the county. It's a big county full of lots of different um, points of view, uh, very diverse. And being mm -hmm. able to bring more perspectives to the table is always a positive. Um, the one negative that um, people talk about is really that um, ability to have conversations that aren't in public meetings. So right now with three, uh, they are not allowed to have private conversations commissioner to commissioner because it's mm -hmm. a quorum and so it needs mm -hmm. to be um, publicly noticed and transparent in um, all conversations in public. So they all get together Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to have um, meetings. So the one hang up when you have more is that ability to kind of make decisions before coming to the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be the only drawback that I mm -hmm. would see. And I think the concept of having more people uh, with concerns and interest in serving the people is always helpful. We need more brain power because there are so many different committees, activities, contacts with the working groups on mm. city councils, more so than just attending the final city council meeting, but to really hear the nuts and bolts of what the city is dealing with. That would be great. Um, that would be a great target. And with um, three people, you're really dividing multiple organizations and committee meetings among the three. So more people would spread that out and perhaps more in-depth uh, take back to the commission for further discussion as mm -hmm. a group. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's part of that is having a nonpartisan county commission. I feel that rather than it being Republican, independent, or democratic, that it is about serving the people of Jackson County and we're all there to serve rather than the political backdrop and that would be a value if our uh, county can move beyond polarization i think it is a place where we could do that mm -hmm. uh, five is not um, an overwhelming number of people to come to consensus uh, 
mm -hmm. uh, which would be a wonderful thing. Um, and I think at this present time, if two commissioners need to bring an extra issue, I would say have an evening meeting and do the pay for the people who need to record the meeting. Mm -hmm. They work from 10 to 7 instead of from 9 to 5, so you can have a later in the day called meeting mm -hmm. when you have a really important uh, discussion that involves uh, community input. Mm -hmm. So, Is it a budgetary issue? Um, if you have more commissioners, you're going to have higher uh, salaries, I mean more, more dollars spent on salaries. Is that an issue that's raised or um, maybe we should lower the uh, salaries of the commissioners? Well, one could divide the current salary by five. That's true. No. And, uh, and I think that's yeah. a point of discussion. I think there is a lot of work that they do. And Amy and Absolutely. I both agree that it's equal pay for equal work. Um, so right. I think that would need to be a discussion about what is appropriate for mm -hmm. that. You know, what are other county commissioners paid mm -hmm. where they have more than five people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I understand the pay raise came 2000 eight maybe yes it was yeah so I think all of that's open to discussion and will be a, and it, it requires a change in the county charter right that's and you a big can one. and you can do that by a petition from the public or the county can commissioners can vote to change the charter and then it goes to the people for a vote so you vote the change then it goes to, to the people to it always has it. to go to correct it either the comes from the vote. people right. to the people or county commissioners to the people got it I'd so like very to good. see the commissioners really kind of step up and engage more with the community mm -hmm. um, and so when we talk about adding five that might make that um, easier to achieve. Mm -hmm. I see our, I've brought this up a few times, our committees that they're tasked with being the liaisons to mm. um, declining. And so an economic development committee hasn't met in two years. Ooh. Our addictions or our um, drug and alcohol planning hasn't met since last February. So there's these committees that do very important work. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see commissioners who are just doing more, engaged more. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I really have focus. So they're not meeting because there's not a commissioner involved in that? No, there is. Yeah, there is a co there's always a liaison. Right, but because there's only three, they can only be engaged at, at a certain level. So I guess I don't understand why the commission couldn't meet um, because there's only three commissioners. They are not going to go ahead and do their work. Um, regardless of the commissioners, that what you're saying? Yeah. Right, they could. I think that there's uh, just leadership leadership um, problem right would be yeah. nice. okay well uh, any other comments on that question you guys I've got a second question mm -hmm. here okay uh, this um, kind of ties in with what you guys were just talking about Jackson County has a strong county commissioner Danny Jordan um, and I have observed over my I don't go to county commissioner meetings that often but I've had some interaction with him and um, my concern has always been that it would appear that the commissioners defer to him uh, because he's extremely knowledgeable, extremely competent. He, you know, controls the budget at some some level. So I, I guess I'm wanting to know: uh, is that is that something that you might want to uh, take a little different position on? Would you want to push back on him a little bit? if he comes forward with uh, certain um, positions. I think it comes back to knowledge. If you're yes. more knowledgeable by going to the, the, mm -hmm. those commissions, you can ask better questions of him. Right. I also think it is a matter in, in many cases about, um, for instance, as a physician, when there's an issue, I look for the etiology or the underlying cause. So I'm very much concerned about the level of preventive services that we give, um, such as mental health, addiction services, addressing homelessness. So these are issues that drag the economy down. And if we're focused on fiscal conservatism, um, when we need to be directing funds to bring up our community, um, then it's a different direction and it's a conversation. I don't know how individually the commissioners 
engage with Mr. Jordan, but I would find him very open to those conversations mm -hmm. that we take a second look at issues. And that would be the beginning point is conversation and understanding where he, his global view is uh, and where mm -hmm. I personally would feel we need to take a second look. And I think, for instance, with mental health, it's not that we don't have good providers, but if you don't have Oregon Health Plan or a CCO or you don't go to La Clinica, you fall in a hole. Right. And so mm. that is the population that feeds the jail, that are, mm -hmm. have, uh, are underserved. It's mm -hmm. a cycle. That's it's, right. And it's a cycle, so where do we intervene in that? And, and that would be my approach. Okay. I don't think Excellent. he's an unreasonable man at all. Very Amy? good. So I've spent the last um, decade working in nonprofits where we do a lot mm -hmm. around what the executive director, the admin, and the board's roles are. And I think it's pretty similar in the county. Um, Danny is a really strong mm -hmm. administrator. Um, I believe that the commissioners are there to really set a vision and priorities. And he's able to then identify tools and strategies and get the work done. And when I've met with him, I, I do go to the county commissioner meetings and have met with him a few mm -hmm. times, and that seems to be what his perception is as well, is really it's the commissioners can set the priorities um, and provide that leadership, and mm -hmm. then he's implementing that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think he could be a very strong ally. Like you've mm -hmm. said, he's a, um, mm -hmm. got strong direction. Mm -hmm. I think that it's up to the commissioners to really provide, like Lanita's saying, right. our priority, or her priority, my, I share it as well, um, mm -hmm. really is that prevention. I know that a dollar spent on prevention saves you $10 down the road. Yep. Um, I think getting upstream of this jail issue and addressing mental health mm -hmm. and addiction right. and being able to um, prevent that before they end up in jail is a huge component. I was up at the Oregon Youth Authority in Woodburn and looking at our you know, 14 to 24 year old young men Mm -hmm. um, offenders and what they've been able to do in that setting. They've provided college technical training support. Oh, wonderful. We don't, and, I, I haven't heard about that. Oh, that it's, if you could tour it, I went in with all sorts of preconceived ideas right. um, and left just feeling like, gosh, can we not provide that before they end up incarcerated? Mm -hmm. um, Where is this? It's up in Woodburn. Mm -hmm. Across from the outlets. <laughs> you know, it's, it's further right, in, but right, it's right, not very right. far. It's probably a 10-minute drive. Yeah. Uh, but what they're doing with rehabilitation is mm -hmm. really outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of model programs out there, mm -hmm. and if we you know, shift our priorities, I think that we could have a lot of mm -hmm. impact. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Well, um, I attended that forum, and I uh, took some video while I was there. So if we could roll the uh, video, uh, first video, which I believe is a question that you received about Jordan, Jordan Cove, and how the commissioner's uh, positions are on that. So can we run that video? So here we are. Okay, you guys can look it up. I want to add about how excellent our service providers like Aaron maintain its current opposition to the Jordan Cove Pacific Connector Pipeline projects and why. <laughs> That's a 90 second question and answer. That's all we have for you today. <laughs> Absolutely they should
all of those reasons, I continue to oppose it. I think natural gas needs to stay in the ground. It's being uh, harvested with unconscionable techniques such as fracking that are wrecking havoc where that is happening. Um, and I would think that we can get the same employment boost by putting water in a pipeline from Power Prairie Hyatt Lakes um, and that open irrigation ditch so our water for agriculture is not contaminated with pesticides, herbicides, algae. And there's another pipeline that needs to come around from Four Mile Lake that would also provide us with some hydroelectricity. That is a win-win pipeline uh, put in by pipe fitters, local people. And um, if we have a leak there, it's water. It's not natural gas and explosion. And if it ruptures, we have a new river. <laughs> Well, I know that was a little hard to hear. I hope uh, I hope our audience out there was able to hear it. Do you have anything else that you'd like to add to what you said about the Jordan Cove? Well, I hope I said that I don't think we should pass gas under Jackson County, but uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. Okay, don't Amy, so. that it's a continued. We're continuing to get pressure, mm -hmm. right, by the company putting this. In. I've got a shiny brochure after shiny brochure at home. Yeah. And that pressure is also um, coming in the form of donations to candidates. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I really just want us as a community to be thoughtful about, um, we've all agreed that we're opposing this in general, um, and to just really stick with that, and that there mm -hmm. are alternative mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. things that we could be doing. And that's really what Lanita was highlighting um, in that clip, Great. rather than the Great. Jordan Cove. Project. And I also think climate change is something we really have to address. And this is a Canadian company mm. piping gas to be consumed in Asia, and it's tons of carbon into the atmosphere. Right. And the summers here uh, and fires, uh, it's a drought area now, and it fe feels like we would be doing something for a very short-term economic gain with a huge risk. downside risk, right. both from uh, leakage or explosions in a natural gas line, and uh, mm -hmm. the Canadian gas line had an explosion, fortunately not in a populated mm -hmm. area, but you're not gonna predict where the explosion's gonna be. I would really love to see us continue to focus on what is sustainable and what in 30 years is still a good idea right. and really put Ooh. our eggs in those baskets. And so, Do you have any ideas have, about that? I mean, the WISE Project was one. Um, any yes. kind of renewable energy, mm -hmm. anything that we can count on still being a good idea in 20 years. Well, is we're, we're going to talk focus. about climate change Well, I'd like to two. segue into that. Well, let's, let's take on our next question. It's like, oh, no, I no. follow <laughs> this. Okay, but... Be ready. Okay. We're ready. All right. Um, the budget. <clears throat> Jackson County budget. Everyone <laughs> likes to know about budgets. I especially love budgets. So can you tell us just what is going on with your rainy day fund, with your reserve funds? What What's going on with those? They seem to be particularly large. Or is that by law they have to be as large as they are? Could you just explain those reserves and rainy day funds for me? So I, as somebody who's not a county commissioner yet, can probably, exp I can give you my perception of it. Great. Um, I love budgets too. As executive director of nonprofits, I really love getting in and mm -hmm. seeing what we can do. I know that when we put money towards um, projects, that we really are setting the priorities mm -hmm. for whatever organization we're with. So as a county, when you do go through the budget, you get to see really where our priorities are. 
Um, That's right. The commissioners are really, they have the most say in the general fund. And the majority of the budget really is in that um, sheriff, courts, um, public safety sector. Mm -hmm. um, but the general fund is where they get to do um, more prioritizing. How much is in the general fund? Oh, I couldn't tell you right now. Do you know the number? I don't know the Sorry. exact number okay. on that. What's the total um, budget? 340. 340 million. Mm -hmm. A year. Mm -hmm. A year. Mm -hmm. So in, in regards to a rainy day fund, every organization should have one, right? So if there's a change in any one of your income sources, that you're able to continue your sustainability. So general funds are super important. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with that. I disagree with using any program funds to put in your rainy day fund. So mm -hmm. if, if um, funds are intended for one of your programs, um, I use my teacher example, right? So if each of the teachers at my school gets $100 a month, for school supplies and they come back and say, I saved you $95 a month. My question is, well, did the kids ever do art? Did they do any mm -hmm. hands-on learning? Mm -hmm. The point of providing good service really was mm -hmm. in designating those funds to that specific item. And mm -hmm. so I would be very careful um, in reviewing the budget to make sure that the funds are spent where they're supposed to be spent so that our community has the services that they need. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the health and human service budget, mm -hmm. about 10% is in prevention and the other 90% is um, mm -hmm. you know, in, in taking care of issues. And I feel like that needs to be better balanced. Yes. I like to focus on getting upstream at the root causes. And so when Very I good. look at a budget, those are really the priorities that I'm after. Mm -hmm. So uh, the rainy day fund should be intended, in my opinion, um, to prevent you um, from really scrambling if there is an mm -hmm. uh, income stream that dries up. Mm -hmm. And the rainy day fund is um, also called a reserve fund. Oh, they're one and the same then, okay. There's a contingency fund mm. that can be utilized. In every budget, in every, every department. In every, yeah. anywhere. Yeah. Um, but the reserve fund is over a hundred million dollars, so it's about a third of the entire budget, mm -hmm. and it carries forward every year. Mm -hmm. And then the contingency fund was mentioned with purchase of land recently, uh, mm -hmm. that it's ten million dollars in the contingency fund. Mm -hmm. So of the um, general fund, of the general fund, okay. of the general budget. Right. Okay. All right. And I know that, like for instance, the roads department. Uh, within the rainy day or reserve fund, there is a portion of like 10, 12, 15 million if a county bridge collapses and you have to fix that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is part of what is the, the rainy day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now what part of the budget will be used when we have the earthquake? And we know that our bridges are at stake and they're primarily county bridges. Is that money going to be used to get out there and put these bridges back up or provide different ways of, is that what it's to be used for, the rainy day fund? When, when we have the earthquake and, and when all the bridges okay, collapse. Okay, Scania earthquake, that's 75 years overdue. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank that you. One, that little that one, 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 that, that little okay. one, you know, that just, you know. You're yes. bringing me back to my disaster presentations. Yes, the great. <laughs> um, I couldn't tell you if the county rainy day fund would pay for bridges. I. I really don't know if that's what it's designated for. Mm -hmm. It's not noted um, in the budget, mm -hmm. um, but absolutely we need to be prepared and have right. plans around that right. and really look at what piece is the county's um, to mm -hmm. repair and make mm -hmm. sure that um, we are prepared for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do the commissioners have the authority to direct the, city uh, the county administrator to take monies out of the rainy day fund and put them towards some other line item? Whose decision is that? I've never seen money taken out of the rainy day fund and back in. That's like your savings account. Well, I know, but sometimes and, you have to use it. And I would, I'll plead ignorance on, on how that manipulation don't. is. Yeah, usually you don't it's use It's in your, your contingency rainy day fund. fund. Yeah. And yeah, you have enough in your contingency fund. I would assume fund. that it would be approved, like brought to yes. the board for Absolutely. approval. Right. Um, yeah. I think all the money movement needs to be approved by the commissioners. It yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? I mean, the administrator has a uh, certain amount that he's able to spend, right, mm -hmm. without bringing it to the commission. Right. Oh, okay. Um, and right. over that, okay. I mean, that's pretty typical for yeah. any organization. Right. You right. have right. Um, the ability to make payments. Mine would be $10,000. Anything above that mm -hmm. gets approval. 
Well, we're, we're getting down to about five minutes here. I'd like to ask one more big question. Maybe we can get it finished here. It's about the jail. So um, there was an article actually in the paper um, that the county has purchased land uh, for, for potentially for a jail, uh, depending on whether um, the community is willing to pass, uh, the county uh, is willing to pass a bond for that. So what, what's your position? Uh, do we need a thousand bed jail? Um, if so, um, you know, or not. Um, Lenita, you wanna start out with that? Our jail was built 40 years ago. It's a very linear structure, so it is not up to modern standards of how mm -hmm. you use your personnel to monitor your, um, your clients. Mm -hmm. So the jail at this point could house 600 people on a daily census, and it can house 290, 292. So the lower risk offenders are turned out back into the community because they're deemed of low risk mm -hmm. for whatever their offense is. They're given a court date. And part of the difficulty is they may be unhoused. Um, mm -hmm. They do not show up for their court date. So then there's another warrant. There's a lot of paperwork that gets regenerated. And um, the big burdens have come through people who are not in um, the best, I would call it, uh, comfort zone with mental health conditions. Mm -hmm. They're off their medication. They've lost contact with their provider, and also um, yeah. addiction mm -hmm. issues, whether burglaries, other offenses, feeding a habit. We're going to have to continue that on with part two. I You'll am get to so verbal. <laughs> you you can you can finish you your thought, and then we'll get Amy involved in that. But we're coming to the end of part two of Girl Talk. And again, we want to thank our two guests that are running for county, uh, Jackson County uh, County Commissioners. Uh, if we could put, put up their websites, we have Lenita Witt, who's running for position three. I think we have a graphic of her um, website. And then also Amy Theron, who's running for position one. Yes. So ladies, you'll be back with us in part two. And Girl Talk is... Um, Available on Saturdays at 3 o'clock and Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. on channel uh, 5, uh, 115, is that right? Channel, channel 15, excuse me, uh, on Ashland um, Home Net and 180, channel 182 on Charter. We hope that you will uh, check us out sometime. And uh, we also are on KSKQ. We will be starting back up on our radio show on 89.5 KSKQ in January, right, Carol? Correct. And Carol, you want to thank our... I would uh, like to thank our volunteers, Wanda Borland, who's director. She also did graphics. Um, David Newnow, uh, JC, Joe Curl, uh, who's also the floor manager. Dorothy Newnow, thank you. So thank you all. We couldn't have done this without you. Many thanks. And we'd also like to thank the DMC, the Digital Media Center, and Southern Oregon uh, um, University. University, thank you. You used to work there, didn't you, Carol? <laughs> okay, thanks, and please stay tuned for part two. We'll have more questions for candidates for county commissioner. It's word fun. Girl talk, girl talk. What's better than girl talk?